Hello everybody, this is Reddit Oscar. Today let's talk about the lore of the wandering mausoleums. The walking tombs scattered across the lands between, guarded by beheaded spirits. Who built them, and why? What's their purpose? We're going to go through all of the potentially relevant evidence, and then at the end come to some speculative conclusions. We'll begin with some item descriptions. The Eclipse Crest Heater Shield says, The sun in Eclipse is said to be the symbol of the wandering mausoleum where the soulless demigods slumber. A ghost near the Weeping Peninsula's mausoleum says, The mausoleum prowls, cradling the soulless demigod. O America, Queen Eternal, he is your unwanted child. Okay, so the mausoleums have America's soulless and unwanted children. Since Godwin was the first demigod to die, these ones must have happened after. They are probably the demigods that fell during the Night of the Black Knives. The Eclipse Crest Great Shield says, The Eclipse Sun, drained of color, is the protective star of soulless demigods. It aids the Mausoleum Knights by keeping destined death at bay. Okay, so, something about the sun in Eclipse drains it of color, and a sun drained of color in Eclipse has the power to keep destined death at bay. Does that mean that the normal sun does the opposite? Is that why in Limgrave, during the day, the crucified appear dead, but at night, when the sun is not present, they come alive and their pained screams are audible? And assuming that the Eclipse can keep Dust and Death at bay, why are the mausoleums trying to do that? Does that mean that the demigods aren't actually dead? The term that's used to refer to them is soulless. And that's a word that's also used with Godwin, who was also killed by the Black Knife assassins. So are these demigods soulless in a similar way? Did they, like Godwin, die in soul alone, but their bodies remain intact? Are they alive in some way? Alive enough that it's important for the mausoleums to try and keep destined death away from them, to prevent them from being dead completely. And if that's the case, then why are they trying to be preserved? And who set up the mausoleums in the first place to preserve them? All right, let's put a pin on that and we'll get back to it in a moment. Let's talk about the other instances in which the word soulless is used. In Castle Soul, there's a ghost that says, O great sun, frigid sun of soul, surrender yourself to the eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. There's another ghost that says, Lord Mikula, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. All right, so here are the facts that that tells us. The people that were in Castle Soul were working for Mikula. They were trying to create an eclipse, and through creating an eclipse, the sun would be swallowed and life would be granted to soulless bones. They failed in this attempt, and Mikola's comrade, who they were trying to revive, remained soulless. Now this could point to Mikola being in charge and responsible for all of the wandering mausoleums. He was in charge of what was going on in Castle Soul. He was trying to eclipse the sun as a means to keep destined death at bay and revive someone who's soulless and there's a wandering mausoleum right outside the castle. So while it's unconfirmed, it's certainly possible that Mikola collected the bodies of the soulless demigods, housed them in mausoleums, had the warriors in service to each of those demigods become headless mausoleum knights, so that they could protect their fallen lord while Mikola searches for a way to bring them back to life. Let's focus right now specifically on who Mikola was trying to bring back with the prayers at Castle Soul. Who is his comrade? The obvious first answer is Godwin the Golden. He is, after all, Mikola's half-brother and first of the demigods to die. And his death is a big problem in the lands between. But Mikola bringing Godwin back to life contradicts what he says in the Golden Epitaph Sword. Its description says, A sword made to commemorate the death of Godwin the Golden, first of the demigods to die, infused with the humble prayer of a young boy. O oh brother, Lord brother, please die a true death. The prayer of the young boy is most likely Mikola. So assuming the comrade Mikola is attempting to revive in Castle Soul is Godwin, then either Mikola changed his mind since the sword epitaph was made, or he still wants Godwin to die a true death, but he can't manage it without bringing him back to life first. And in that case, he's using the eclipse to bring Godwin back to life so that he can die properly. Or it could be that the soulless comrade isn't Godwin at all. It could be one of the soulless demigods housed in the wandering mausoleums. And there's some distant possibility that it could be Ensha Mikola is trying to revive. Ensha is the unspeaking adherent of Sir Gideon the All-Knowing. But the armor he wears 
is graced with gold human bones, and its description says that the bones belong to an ancient lord, the soulless king, the lord of the lost and the desperate who was known as Ensha. Gideon's servant who is currently wearing the armor is maybe not important, but this ancient lord Ensha has some odd things in common with Godwin and with Mikula. First of all, they're both soulless. Godwin is known as the golden and Ensha has golden human bones, and the armor describes Ensha as the lord of the lost and the desperate, which is similar to how Fia describes Godwin as the lord of the meek and the many. And that description has a loose connection to Mikula as well. The sacred crown helm reads, worn by foot soldiers sworn to the Halic tree. Who is it that Mikula shall bless if not the low and the meek? The Ensha connection is probably not relevant. The armor set is the only time that this character is mentioned. But the similarities between Ensha, Mikula, and Gondwin were eyebrow raising enough that I thought it was important to mention them and probably keep an eye out for mentions of Ensha in the DLC in case information found there suddenly makes him relevant. All right, let's put a pin on Mikula and talk about Godwin specifically. The Death Root item description says, On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting in the form of Death Root. All right, so after Godwin was killed, he became soulless. You can see his body in the deep root depths merged into the great tree. But that's probably not where he was killed. After he died, his body was probably brought there and was interred into the great tree in the hope that he would be reabsorbed into the earth tree. As a result of his burial in the great tree, the rune of death spread through the roots all across the lands between, sprouting in the form of death root, and those who came in contact with death root became those who live in death. Now it's probably the case that nobody knew that this would happen when they put Godwin in the Great Tree. This was supposed to just be an Erd Tree burial for Godwin. Various spirit ashes describe Erd Tree burial as a hero's honor, and Godwin's heroic exploits are well documented in the lore. As a great hero and the first demigod to die, his burial in a place of great importance, like the very heart of the Great Tree, was only natural. And assuming that that's true, assuming that burying Godwin produced unexpected results, that they didn't know that Deathroot would sprout after they interred him into the Great Tree, then that could very well be the reason for the wandering mausoleums, and the reason why they're designed the way they are. If the other demigods that fell are soulless in the way Godwin is soulless, then Mikula would have good reason to prevent them from undergoing Erd Tree burial. Assuming spreading Deathroot through the Great Tree wasn't on purpose, then it wouldn't have been until after Godwin was interred that they realized their mistake. And so the mausoleums could have been a way to prevent that from happening to the other demigods. By keeping them away from the ground and having the mausoleums wander, they might be preventing the rune of death from taking root. And if that's the case, then the eclipsed sun, the protective star of the soulless demigods, might be keeping destined death at bay for that purpose, to prevent them from following in Godwin's footsteps until a solution can be devised. Alright, that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.